Okay, ladies and gentlemen, um, welcome back and uh, let's talk about section 7.4, which is talking about solving trig equations. And you guys are probably saying, well, haven't we been doing this the entire time? Um, in all actuality, we have not been. What we've been doing is finding the cosine the tangent, the cotangent, the secant, and the cosecant given some information, but we have never truly f solved an equation dealing with trig functions. So let me let me show you an example. This is what we've been doing so far. We've been saying stuff like this. Hey, given that the sine of an angle theta is one half and the a tangent of theta is negative find uh, let's make this more exciting let's not make it one half let's make it uh, four fifths okay um, find cosine of two theta okay so notice something we're finding what cosine of two theta is we're not really doing anything else okay so um, this is in a traditional sense we're not solving um, for theta and that's the whole point behind this we've never truly found the angle that gives us 4 over 5 we all we've done is use some right triangle trigonometry and manipulated it to get an answer okay so let me just recap here um, cosine of 2 theta is cosine squared theta minus sine squared theta so if I find sine and cosine of theta we're ready to rock and roll I already have sine so I already know that this is gonna be 4 fifths squared but I gotta find cosine. Well, let's see here. Where is sine of theta positive? Well, that is one and two. Where is tangent negative? Well, that is two and four. So where are we living? Looks like we're living in two to me. So here we go. Let's try to figure out this other piece of the puzzle. So I'm gonna draw my angle in two. Note, I still don't know what the heck the angle is, okay? The sine is opposite over hypotenuse, so the opposite is 4, the hypotenuse is 5. And because this is a special triangle, what do you mean special triangle? 3, 4, 5 triangle, this side is 3. Notice I put it in absolute values because it's actually negative in this quadrant. So it'll be negative 3 over 5 all squared. Alright, and if you do some math here, you end up getting 9 over 25 minus 16 over 25, which gives you negative 7 over 25. But notice... We've never found the angle. We've only found the measure, okay? So let me give you an example of what I mean by this. Okay, so I'm going to clean our board real quick. What if I said sine of theta is one half? Well, you still should have the same thought process. You still should say, oh, sine is positive where? One and two, right? So let me draw you a picture here. Sine is positive in... 1 and 2. Well, if you think your unit circle, these are the only two we're looking at. So where is sine 1 half at? Well, sine is 1 half. The y is 1 half at this spot. 1 half root 3 over 2. And right here at this spot, which is the exact same thing, 1 half negative root 3 over 2. Now, here's the true difference in what we did previously in this now. You should be able to tell me what the angle is because you know your unit circle very well. So what angle is this? This is pi over 6, and this is 5 pi over 6. So what's the moral of the story? Theta has to be pi over 6, 5 pi over 6. We're officially at the point where we're solving for the angle, which is a beautiful thing. Okay, let's do a couple more. Let's do a couple more. That's all it is to it. All right, guys, I'm going to race this guy out. Let's do, how about this one? How about this one? Okay, example. Cosine of x equals square root of 2 over 2. So now, you got that root 2 over 2. You should already be thinking your unit circle. Your unit circle has a couple places where it has root 2 over 2. But first things first, where is cosine positive? What's positive in 1 and in 4? Right? So where do we acquire this root 2 over 2 at? Well, think your unit circle yet again. We're in 1 and in 4. So 
what angle is has this point? Remember, once again, you got to know the point, and you should be able to backtrack to the angle. So this is root 2 over 2, comma, root 2 over 2. That's negative. Note this guy is root 2 over 2, root 2 over 2. But they're both positive here, okay? Notice the cosine is both root 2 over 2. What are the two angles in these two quadrants, guys? Well, this guy is definitely pi over 4, but, okay? And this guy, what is this guy? Well, he is 7 pi over 4. Why? I know my unit circle. So this angle x has to be pi over 4, comma 7 pi over 4. In the first revolution, what do I mean by first revolution? That first rotation, that first 360 degrees, that first 2 pi. Now, if they ask you for more than that, then you have to go out another lap, which means you have to add 2 pi to each one of these. So this is just the first. So as you know, we've already graphed sine and cosine. These go on forever. So this is just the first lap. Okay. If you wanted the second lap, you'd add 2 pi to pi over 4. So let's see. 2 pi to pi over 4 is pi over 4 plus, I'm just finding a common denominator, 8 pi over 4, which is 9 pi over 4. So this piece on the second lap would be 9 pi over 4. And since 2 pi is really 8, 8 pi over 4, this becomes 15 pi over 4. So this is what we call the first coterminal side, the, the second lap, if you will. Okay, and I could do this forever. Most of the time, we're just interested in in the first uh, first uh, the first revolution. And this is what we call, and this is why, that's why we always say solve. This is normally the instructions giving primary solutions. Primary solutions is just that first lap. So let's stress what the first lap is. The first lap is from 0 to 2 pi. Now notice it's not equal to 2 pi because that would be the, 2 pi is the start of the second lap. All right. So let's do a couple more. Let's do a couple more, okay? Let's do one that's a little trickier than normal. A little trickier than normal. Okay, how about this one? How about this one? 2 sine of x equals square root of 3. Well, first things first, we got to isolate for sine before we can think about it. I'm sick of looking at this x. Let's call it a theta. And we'll say the instructions are solve for the primary solutions. Okay? So, first things first, you got to isolate for the sine before you can think about it. All right, so where is sine root 3 over 2? Well, sine is positive here and here. Well, root 3 over 2, where the, where's the sine? Where's the y root 3 over 2? That's a big number, I would think. It's up tall. So, this is pi over 3 and 2 pi over 3, which is where that point that is root 3 over 2, the y is root 3 over 2 occurs. Why? I know my unit circle. So theta has to equal pi over 3 to pi over 3. I would encourage you, if you're not good with your unit circle, go back and redo chapter 5.1, 5.2, which talks about just getting to know the unit circle. It's absolutely important. Okay? So this is uh, pretty much all there is to it. Okay? Let's do one more. I think we haven't done tangent. Um, okay, so let's see here. Uh, this is, this is going to be a good one. Tangent of theta but I want you to find when it's negative square root of 3 now why is this hard everybody should say to yourself why is it hard because tangent is sine over to cosine so first things first we're gonna start just like any old problem where is tangent negative well you gotta say tangents negative in 2 and in 4 so I should have answers that live here and here well who do you remember the the, the three points that are occurring here well, let's see this point this point and this point well, let's see here this is going to be um what is this going to be this is going to be one half for my x root three over two but x is negative this will be root two over two but once again the x is negative this is going to be one half root three over two once again, the x is negative. Okay, so I need to think. I need you to think about this. When do we divide? So remember, since tangent of theta is sine of theta over cosine of theta, this is just y over x. So you got to do some division, guys. When do you divide the y by the x and get negative root three over two? Where there's only one scenario. If you do this point, well, you got to doodle a little bit. Okay, if you divide this 
by this, what do you end up getting? Well, let's see here. Well, check out this guy right here. I uh, flopped something here. You guys know what I flopped? This is supposed to be here. I was wondering what was looking so weird. This is a half. Sorry, guys. All right. Now, let me show you what, what ends up happening here. Okay. If you divide, let's just take the, the, the point I just had. Okay. That's, I, that I botched. If you take one half, which is the y, and divide it by the x, which is root 3 over 2 negative, you get 1 over the square root of 3. It's not that guy. Okay. Not this guy. We're looking for that guy. If you do it with this one, this point right here, you get root 2 over 2 divided by root 2 over 2 that's negative and sure I know that's negative 1 still not this guy so you end up with this thing right here which ends up being root 3 over 2 over 1 half and which is the 1 half is a negative and this gives you root 3 so what what, what point is this what what, uh, what what rating is that that is uh, 2 pi over 3 and good news it's gonna happen in one other place and that's this place right here which is going to be uh, which is going to be uh, 5 pi over 3. So our thetas that satisfy this tangent is going to be 2 pi over 3 and 5 pi over 3. Pretty easy. Pretty easy, but you got to know your unit circle well. If you don't know your unit circle, it gets really, really dank and scary. Okay? So uh, let's do one more good one, and then we'll move on to some big stuff. So literally all we're doing is isolating for the trig function, and then when we isolate for it, we can think about it. So check this guy out. What if I said 6 cosine of x plus um, 2 equals, uh, I don't know, let's call it 8. Uh, call it 9, right? So you subtract off your 2, which gives you this. And then you divide by this. Now you say to yourself, well, dang, what ends up happening here? Well, good news. What is the biggest that cosine can be? Well, cosine, if you remember this function, cosine of any angle, it's bounded in between negative 1 and 1. So this thing, the biggest it could be is 1. No, this is bigger than 1. This has no solution or undefined. Okay, it's not defined. So therefore, this guy's not solvable, which makes it really, really easy to do. All right, guys, enjoy. enjoy. Um, so just make sure that uh, you just keep pushing hard, and we're almost uh, close towards final time, I'm sure, because it's Chapter 7. So um, remember, in order to go somewhere you've never been, you've got to be prepared to do something you've never did, guys. So uh, push hard, push forward, and I'll see you guys on the flip side.